Hey, 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 profit takers. Welcome back to another episode. This is Victoria here, and I am so excited to share with you some of the best trade setups that happened for us on Friday, also known as first red days, first green day signals that showed up for us on Thursday evening so that we can be ready to trade Friday with no stress, all because we have this wonderful tool, the Profit Taker Alert dashboard. Guys, I just, I'm so excited that this is coming to our community and I'm able to share it with you guys finally. <laughs> and guys, we're, let's rock. Let's get to the charts right now. All right. So without any further ado, we had 14 signals. So you can't tell me that, oh, I missed a trade. Oh, I missed an opportunity. Oh, it wasn't in my session. I mean, 14 signals in all sessions. Now, as I was preparing this, guys, I had everything written out on the charts for you, and I went and messed up with my templates, and I was starting to create personal templates for for each of these individual pairs because I was like, okay, um, I want to make sure that when we're trading, we're not getting, we're picking our trades that we're going to take based on this one setup. I mean, if this is the only setups that you took during the week, which happened probably twice a week on in, in, in multiple pairs, I mean, really, um, what more do you really need? I don't know what your situation is. Everybody is different in what their goals are and why they're trading. And that's why, you know, this is such a an amazing opportunity for people to level up and scale their own personal trading income right? You don't need to base your income on somebody else's. Everybody's different. Okay. So that's why, you know, I'm just, you know, I don't show anything with, with money or anything like that because it's just, it's not everybody. Everybody's going to be different, right? So all I'm showing you guys here is what works. These, this, this dashboard works, it's coming to our community and it's going to be available to you. And, you know, in order to get it, get the best deal that we're going to offer once it's released is to join the locals, join our Pips on Fire locals community, which I'm going to eventually change to profit takers because we're just not catching pips, guys. We are collecting profits. And that's what trading is all about, taking profits all day, every day when that setup obviously shows up for us. So I'm going to go through a couple of these. Um... I'll go through a couple of these guys. Actually, I'll go through all 14. Um, as you can see, AC is the first one that had a signal day on Thursday, but I'm not going to break them all down because it will take some time because <laughs> I did take a lot of time doing that. But I do, I did post the ones that I broke down in the locals group. So be, be a part of the community, guys. Go in there. Do your thing. Do it. Let's do it. All right. So, um, so basically, we're looking at the three-day cycle, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is day one, day two, day three, and then, of course, day three turns into day one, okay? That's typically how it all works. So I'm going to just do that here real quick. We have the open range on Monday, and then, of course, the range extended. So one thing that uh, I will be doing in the future, don't expect this like straight away, guys, because we just want to get this thing launched into the community. And then from there, we'll start making uh, changes um, that I'm, I think will benefit us based on this trading style. Um, I do like the fact that we want to capture um, the open range from Monday's open and close. That's a big Stacey Burke thing because initially the psychology support and resistance on Asia's high and low is a uh, Steve Murrow thing. So that's how this initial, this original uh, uh, indicator was created based off of that. So I do want to make some uh, adjustments based on what I'm learning with uh, Stacey Burke. And I think this would be great because now um, we can really uh, get a better understanding, right, of where we are. But you know what, this line, <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? This line could totally act as the 50% mark line for the week. So, you know, it might not be too bad to, to leave it there. But just remember to add the, because uh, it is important. I'm not saying Asia's high and low is important. So I'm just drawing that box on top of that to capture the high and low for Monday as well, because you don't want to not 
miss out on that. I don't ever want you to think that it's not important because all these levels are very important. So, um, so we have uh, what we would consider the open range, which is day one. And then we consider Tuesday uh, in the initial balance. And that's really the high and low, um, the high and low total from Monday. Right. So once we get the initial balance marked off, we want to just if, if there's a, a higher low in the initial balance, I like to just mark that and just draw it across. That's just what it's just. I promise you it's a good idea to do this. So I'm just going to call this initial balance low. Uh, and I'm just going to draw it across because it's going to come into because you can see how price interacts with it nicely towards the end of the day. Right. And of course, Monday's considered day one. Well, you know, it's always like that until something happens and changes. And then typically we would see day two for Tuesday. And usually day two um, could offer a, a particular trade, um, which is a trend trade, right? And if we see from day one of the open range on for this particular pair, um, prices were short, day two, it wasn't a pretty trade to take this short, but it was there, right? And then um, day three. So day three turns into day one. It's the same thing. And the reason why it does that is because we have a breakout fail. So as you can see here, Tuesday, we were looking to see if the price was gonna go lower and it didn't. It broke out of the, uh, the week, hit the low came back up and then um, it closed inside of the range. So with that being said, I just kind of wait, right? I'm going to draw um, what you would expect at the end of day consolidation, right? So Wednesday came and we had ourselves a high of week. Now, always on, also we want to consider the three pushes that occur within the patterns. And right now I'm looking at H1. Uh, one of my other favorite set, uh, time frames is um, M30. Let me just drop down to M30 real quick. I just want to make sure you guys can see all this. All right. So we closed with Wednesday. And the prices closed right at the same. I mean, I hate it when it does that, right? When it's darn near below, right? It's darn near below the open. But it almost looks the same. But guys, this looks to me like it closed below the open price. And here is the open price, this white line. If you can see that, that is the open price and it closed below. So that is already a signal to let us know that this is going to go short, like we're expecting shorts the next day. And also, for a day, so I'm pretty sure the indicator posted a... Uh, you know, high of day trade here, like one high of week. And then we also had the breakout fail right there. So this was a breakout fail. Okay. Because no more longs in the market. And this is the, I believe we would use this as the level, the daily marker right there. So I'm going to, draw that out because it failed and I'm going to push that out to the end of the week and then I'm just going to call that break out level okay and so we have a lot of things coming into Thursday right lots of things so um if you were taking this trade on Wednesday, you were, this is also the d day three, right? Reversal trade that you would have taken long, right? So it also like Wednesday's big time reversal day, right? So as you're looking at price uh, with a breakout fail right here, we know the next day um, we're looking to go long. And what we like to do is draw the end of day consolidations Oh, I know this is a little weird, a little hard to see. It's just a little hard to see, but I didn't want to have too much stuff on my chart. 
to so many lines, you're like, what the heck's going on here? So we have the end of day consolidation that happened after the breakout fell, closed inside of the range. So what are we expecting here? We're expecting for a uh, stop hunt low rise. Okay, stop hunt low rise. So if I can abbreviate that properly, stop hunt low rise. Okay, that's what we're expecting to happen based on what price told us it was going to do on uh on Tuesday, the signal was basically a failed breakout shorts, came back in, closed inside, and now we drew the end of day consolidation, and now we're expecting prices to interact with this level and continue on long, okay? That is the name of the game. All right, so once that happened on Wednesday, that day three, and it was also a, I'm gonna say C, continue it oh, actually no it's not um let me stop playing around here i'm just gonna leave it like that just be done with it all right so after that closed and you come back to the charts in the evening and you're getting ready to look at what's happening the next day you're like are we going to continue to go long right because that's what you would expect right typically you would expect to go long um and then you would see that prices already broke down right because maybe you traded this in Asia. Then maybe this was your session, Asia and London. Maybe that was your session and then you went to sleep. What, New York, right? Maybe. I'm going to break down to M15 because that's where I put my uh, my session boxes. All right. So the session boxes are there. And then you can see um, for New York, there was a trade for New York too, right? You could have used... Um, the high of this of the London session as your stop hunt level, stop hunt low level. Okay. And then that's that's where your entry would have been. And the moment this thing will start to break down, that's when you need to, you're like, all right, we need to get down. We need to get out of here. Okay. Um, what else do I like to do? I like to go on H4 because that's important too. You want to make sure you draw the levels on H4. So this would have been, um, technically this was last week's high. So I'm just going to add that up there. Why not? Cause that was last week's high, which is going to now when the new week starts, it's going to be the previous week's high. Like I said, I had drawn all this stuff out for you all and I messed up, <laughs> messed this whole thing up. And that is last week's low which when the new week starts, it's going to be the previous week's low. And I believe here would be the month. Yeah. That's a good one right there. Okay. And these are so somewhat similar, so we're going to leave that there. And definitely the previous month's low. And you see, when you step back and look at H4, you can see why prices um, came down to the previous month low and then reverse. So that's why it's important for you to identify that. And that's one of the things I want to include, get added to the uh, to the indicator so that you don't have to do it. Or maybe you have an indicator that already draws these lines out for you, which is great. I think it's good practice, too, to just do it because I do it all the time. I just use it as a, a learning session all the time. Okay. Um, because I remember whenever I used to have these things automatically drawn out for me, and I honestly didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> okay, so that's why I just do it like that. All right, so those levels are drawn out. We were talking about the trade for Wednesday, which was a nice, um, uh, technically, day three reversal trade based on where prices dumped. On Monday, we got the reversal. And then Wednesday, we got a breakout fail and it broke down that day. So it made it very easy and clear for us to see the um, the, the the short trade ending. And here's another thing that we want to consider. Um, they do this stair-stepping three pushes, right? So that's the first one. 
Okay. And here's the second one. And here's the third one down here. So this is where it goes flat on the third push. Okay. So now once that's going flat on um, Thursday, there's really nothing to do here. Cause once you get into level three, you might as well just skip that day. Go find something else to trade because it's not worth it. Okay. It's just going flat level three price action, volatile, crazy. Don't worry about it. Just forget it. All right. So now we have, um, the day for Thursday closes. And now we want to go ahead and identify the end of day close. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. End of day. And it's really just this last swing high and low. So I guess this one would work. And then Swing low. I know this thing, this channel thing is kind of janky, ain't it? It's a little janky, but that's okay. That's okay though. Okay, I'm gonna extend this out a little bit. So then we come into Friday. We got our signal Thursday night or morning, whatever time that you showed up to trade that next uh, session. And then we can see that all we're waiting for again, what? Stop, hunt, low, rise. There we go. We're waiting for price to interact with the end of day consolidation, right? As we can see here, and now we're on, let me just go ahead and get, yeah, let me go down to um, M15. Okay. So what do we see here, guys? We have to also have to consider what's happening, what happened in, in Asia, all right? We had a, a, a low of day. And session. All right, and then um, that's good. That's a good check right there. Looks like that was our first push. And they kind of did this nicely too, guys. So we have our first push there and our second push here. And then the third push for New York. So again, don't try to go long after that third push. Just call it, right? Because it's technically over at that point. Or it goes flat, just like it did. And then you're sitting there trying to figure out, are you going to break down? <laughs> right? You're like, are you going to go and break down? And then you're just like, uh, it's not. So New Yorkers, this was really not even a New York pair anyway. But just FYI, in the London session by around 11 or noon, right, as we know this is 930, you can probably just cut the trade, right, from London for the London folks. All right. And guys, look, we see the low of day. We see the stop hunt to the end of day consolidation. We see... Um, how there was an opportunity to add on to positions right here using this level here that was drawn. It's probably one of the previous weeks high or, uh, or low, which becomes the opposite. And then we see our target here is the 50%. Look at that Asia's low of the week. That was that line in the middle that I was like, oh, you know what? This works. This line does work. And what else is there? Yesterday's high, which is also another place to take profits right? Because that's what we do. We take profits and we call it a day. So that's AC, guys. How'd you like that breakdown? All right? It's pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do here, because this is what I messed up on. So I wanted to save this template and I'm going to go here. First, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to my indicator and this is what I would do, right? I would remove all of the other ones, leave it with that, hit OK. Now I'm going to go to Templates and I'm going to save it. A U, I'm oh, sorry, A, uh, oh yeah, 
U D N uh, CAD C A D and save that template. And that's that. Okay. So now I'm just going to go back from the beginning again and we're going to look at one more. All right. Let's do that. Let's do another one. Don't want to keep you all too much. So again, we did have 14. So we saw that. Let me go to the next one. That was your AC. Look at EC was another one. Another uh, opportunity for you to go short on Friday. And this was for the people who were available in Asia and uh, London to short the market. We had news in Euro on Friday. And then look how prices it went down three levels. Okay. Um, I had my pen. Where did it go? Let's bring this pen back up here. So we had our three levels, guys. And here's the opportunity where it didn't go flat on level three. We actually got a um, engulfment and then we were able to take this reversal trade in New York. So that's another thing. If you're noticing that price isn't moving when it's supposed to move, then just get out. And then the other thing I've noticed is price was moving a lot after 10 o'clock. So, and again, it's all based on news, but a lot of times this month price was moving after 10. All right, so let's look at the other ones because so far we only looked at two of the 14. And that one here I'm just showing you was available for both, for all three sessions. Uh, dollar CAD, same as the Euro CAD. Okay, we had the um, the drop came in early for Asia and London, and then New York offered us a reversal. And we can see uh, again um, that the the short trade was pretty quick, was over pretty quick. Um, Yeah, something like that. All right. Let's go to another one. This is Euro NZD. It's coming right up. Beautiful. This is what I love to see. You see that? How you Asia early birders London had a beautiful freaking trade. OMG. OMG. Okay. And you only left us New Yorkers who came in during the gap time. Low hanging fruit trade. That's what I'm going to call it. I don't know if it's a technical name for it. Um, because look, after yesterday's um, low, we could have taken that trade. But again, it's a risky trade because it's the level three trade and you don't want to be holding on to it because now it went flat and then it really didn't give us much. But again, it is a euro pair. It's a euro and NZD pair. So are we really going to be able to get anything in New York? No. Okay. So we're going to move on to the next one. Euro JPY. This one only really presented very well for uh, for London, and it was not even that great because we had that gap, and then it stuff it just went and it just went flat, but it was crawling up, and it just went flat. I know I was trying to take this trade in New York because sometimes it does give us an opportunity in New York, and it just didn't, so I got out of this one. But as you can see, we had a low of 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 a session and low of day trade, and this was basically gave us a signal on Thursday that we're looking to go long. All right. And if you can see here the pushes, right, you can see it really clearly. It was a beautiful trade for Asia. We had one, two, and then three, which was, was this even worth it? I mean, I don't know how it comes back down here to count the three. But basically, um, if we want to count this up here as a three, let me just do that. Because we did come up here to the high of London. And then um, that's when we had that huge drop. And then it just chopped, right? And that's another thing, sometimes that happens, right? Big drops, you chop the next day or within that session. Okay, let's keep moving. 
Euro, what is this? Uh, NJ, oh yeah, NZDJPY. Oof, this is what I love to see, guys, right? I mean, you can't get any better than this, okay? And then the, the pushes were so clear within the actual um, session, right? We had our low of day here, our first push, second push, and then third push. Again, it's not a pair for New York, but if you were um, trading London, you got an opportunity to take this thing right at yesterday's high, or you could have taken it at the low of the session, okay? Dang, we're, we're not even halfway through, are we? Okay, UJ, another one, low of day uh, for Asia and opportunity for London. Usually this one, this is a major pair and it's supposed to give us something in New York, but it really just didn't. And this is one of those trades where um, if you were, especially if you were looking to go with the trend, it wasn't like giving and you were able to, do, you were able to take this short at the high of, at uh, the open, basically. It wasn't a lot of pips, about 20 something pips. You were able to take that short. This is why I don't care too much for the reversal trade sometimes, because the, this sometimes, especially on a Friday, sometimes this stuff happens, right? So it is what it is. But the session, the other sessions, you know, they played out nicely. All right, what do we have here? AJ, just like NJ, beautiful trade, very clear with the pushes up for the first two sessions of the day. CJ, again, usually we can play, this one plays out nicely sometimes in New York. We were able to get the drop a little bit better than UJ. This was the one that I did choose to take. Um, again, it wasn't that giving, but I took it anyway, even though I don't like taking reversals that much or um, the counters, right? Because I really wanted to get in on this long, right? If I only woke up. <laughs> okay, here's another one. One of my favorites, EA. EA and GA, you're gonna notice, are pretty similar, all right? So this one got the signal. As you can see, we had our pushes nicely. It did go flat a little bit, and I did try to take this thing long with the reversal again. I was like, man, y'all going to give me something? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, you just never know sometimes. This one didn't play out as lovely. I would have liked it on the reversal for New York, but, you know, I did go in anyway and took this trade, but I would have loved to be a part of this beautiful drop for London because that was the actual setup. Asia and London was a beautiful drop. And then we're going to look at GA again, beautiful for Asia and for London. And it just went flat for, for New York. I mean, guys, these trades are amazing. So I've pretty much shared some of the trades with the reversals that came in nicely for New York. Absolutely beautiful trades that played out well for Asia and London. I mean, you can't get, you met, you can't get wrong, right? This is, uh, and you NZD, uh, USD, another beautiful setup. Same with AU. I ended up taking AU short. It did give a, give me a little bit more of what I, you know, I wasn't expecting much, but I did get something out of that one. Um, again, Asia and London. And I believe this is our last one. This is oil. And this one here, guys, beautiful drop. Now, this was beautiful drop because we had a high of, you know what? This is actually one that I... Yeah, here we go. Perfect. It's beautiful. All right, so we're going to start off here. Some uh, breakdown that I'll do because I did spend time on marking this one up. So we had the high of week. Okay, we can see here on Tuesday. So Monday was the open range. Okay. Price did push out. So, um, we're always looking when price does push out like that, we are looking for price to continue to push up. And it technically did. We got our three pushes there. Um, and of course, with this pair, they're always hidden. <laughs> I'm just saying they move so quickly sometimes. These pushes 
can be overlapping sessions. They can be all in the same day, or they can be um, maybe in two or three consecutive days. So you have to consider that. Now we have the initial balance. Now this is the high, right? High and low of the week. Two hundred twenty-five pips. This is a lovely one because you have five hundred and fifty-two pips in three eighty R, so one eighty-four. So that's why I like this pair. So that's the initial balance. So we want to mark it. It's also the high of the week. Okay. So as we are getting into um, Wednesday, so I'm pretty sure we got the signal that day to let us know that we're going to go short, right? Um, so Wednesday comes into play. You have opportunities to short the market in Asia and end of New York, right? The beginning of London, it was going flat, but you're able to see clearly the, the pushes up. So one, two, and then three. And then we got the reversal here. All right. So Wednesday, that was technically um, what day two, the the next trend trade day, you know, however you want to um, view that. So we had our end of day consolidation. And we, we use these levels again. Let me just bring them all the way out because they do come into play. Uh oh, I had to fix that. You just go to another session and come back. Boom, there it is. All right, so end of day consolidation, just draw it out. You can see not only is that right at the Asia high, it's also at the open price and it was yesterday's high. So if price comes up to that and you're looking to short the market, that is one thing that you're going to use for confirmation. Okay. So we got a short and Asia. So you guys got an opportunity. So we're going to draw the low of Asia. Then also you can see we had the low of the day with New York. So if you're in London, you had an opportunity to trade the long. You had the opportunity for the reversal. And you can see here the first push, two, and then three. So come for New York. Um, it laid nicely for us. It was a little later in the session. Um, if you are one of those people like me, like we like to be done within by 12, right? But this one was a little bit later in the session where the drop finally happened. But hey, it finally happened. So the end of day consolidation here, we are now looking at uh, coming into Thursday and price is at the low. Actually, that would be swing high and then low for the day. Okay, price is at the low. Okay, it just came on down here. We have a new low of the week um, for London. So London had the opportunity to get in pretty early to uh, take this trade at the previous day's low, as you can see right here, the blue line. That was your entry. And then you take this trade all the way up to, um, you have these two areas of interest. Again, Asia's high and Asia's low, because that's the initial, I didn't mark anything else on this chart, but those are lines that you can use all day long and then new york is when we started to break down okay so what are we expecting after and you know this this wasn't here yet this signal didn't show up until you know it was over right then we noticed that hey this thing here is a one day trade and price did close above the open Okay, so that's another check, check. Once this shows up for your confirmation the next day, you are looking for the opportunity to go long. I'm going to go down to M5 because that's where you can read all this. <laughs> and you can see that um, we had our first push in Asia, second push, and then third push finished it off right before New York. So that long trade is over. You got to remember those pushes, 
okay um and again this this is available in the locals i did put a screenshot in here there so you can go there and look at it print it out make it one of your um flashcards and you can see how prices came to the high of day we had the gap high right there and then your aggressive entry is right at yesterday's high and the open range as you can see for london they got to use that as a target for new york we used it as an entry and then this thing you know you could have entered there or you could have waited until the break and then you could have entered after that and that was another opportunity you could have taken profits um at london's low which would have been ideal or you can use as you can see the end of day consolidation low is right here you could have used that as well okay so guys what 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 more can i say right this indicator you know that is going to be available to our community is absolutely amazing those were 14 trades that we went through today all the different sessions and opportunities that were there for you to take okay so what are you waiting for join me in locals get signed up there once this thing drops you'll be the first to know and you'll get the special okay all right that's it for now Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.